tonight. 155, 163, 349. Amen. We do need some showers. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And uh, but we need a revival. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, just a couple of uh, quick announcements. Did the dean make any? Uh, no. Nope. Okay. Uh, the father son breakfast uh, next the seventh of uh, that be next. But not this Saturday, but the next Saturday, 7.30, I think we met last time. And uh, then uh, if anybody wants to go up to Missoula on Saturday uh, for a street meeting, uh, just see me after the service uh, by the back door. It'd be fine by, by the office door. Um, okay. Thank you once again for those songs tonight. Let's go to Psalm 33 tonight. Psalm 33. It's in the middle of your Bible. It'll be, Abby is your last service tonight, for a while anyway. You'll come back sometime, right? Amen. Uh, I had a little uh, party out at the, Gide uh, at the Gideons. It's getting bad, folks. Uh, out at the Corneas the other night. Thank you for that, uh, putting that on. Good food, good fellowship. Uh, Brother Rue was uh, out there with his family. Uh, of course, we had a good service Sunday, amen, with Brother Rue. Wasn't that great with just uh, hearing him and seeing uh, the work that he's doing over there? I may mention that a little bit here uh, in the message here tonight. Um, um, anyway, he went to, he's uh, on his way to Great Falls, or probably up there by now, and uh, uh, giving, he's here all week, staying out. Uh, someplace south of town, but uh, he is uh, uh, at a church up there uh, tonight. Okay, <sighs> Psalm 33, there's 22 verses. Um, I went up to Missoula yesterday afternoon and, uh, and got up there, I don't know, four or five o'clock, time to eat, in time to eat, amen, and uh, somebody that my Becca makes really good tacos and she made them for me last night I know it and uh, but anyway uh, I was uh, up there on the uh, sitting on the back deck there with Josh last night and just talking um, and, and we talked about uh, churches and our churches what's going on in them uh, what's going on in our church and uh, and what's going on in his church? There's always something, and uh, we talked. To, uh, so we talked about that for a while. There's always some problem, some trial. It just is. And um, and uh, then we, I talked about. We talked about David's church up there, and uh, things are going on up there. Every every one, and and you know, we talked about five churches, the one back in Bismarck, yeah. and the one in Missoula. And Tim's over there in uh, uh, Post Falls, and uh, David's up there in Kalispell, and this one here. We're family. We talk about the family. Like Silas says, what are you going to do, Silas? says, think I'll, I'll go into the family business, you know. <laughs> that's what he said one time. And, uh, and so we, 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 we talk a lot, uh, us five. Talk to Tim today. And... Um, you know, and every church, it seems, is just a little bit unique yeah. and different. Everyone's different. Mine's not like, you know, the one in Missoula anymore that it was. It's not like, I mean, we all have the same sound doctrine, and I'm really glad for that. I don't, we don't have any differences. You know, we may di have differences of methods, and, uh, and, and certainly they do, and, uh, but we still have, we ha all have that. Uh, sound doctrine about the, the Bible, the Word of God, and how to how to interpret it rightly, dividing the Word of Truth, just all of that. And um, so I uh, I'm very thankful tonight, and I, I and I want to just I got up this morning and I'm in a not a strange place, the house I lived in, so from since '93, and my wife passed away in that house that morning yesterday, this morning, and uh, so, you know, it's just got a lot of memories, 
and I'm back. I live. I live downstairs. I have Judah's bedroom. It used to be the wood room, where we put the uh, the wood for the wood stove. Put it down the chute down there. And stored it down there. And so I'm I'm sitting on his bed, and just reading. And I asked the Lord to uh, to give me something. And I read the Psalms. That's the first thing I read in the morning. And the, and the Lord just uh, this was the Psalm I read this morning. So what I read, I'm going to give you tonight. And, um, and so I, uh, it, it just, I, I just asked the Lord to give me something and, for my heart. And what I saw in this psalm, and I guess what I, uh, I just will mention tonight, it's in the passage, is uh, in verse number five, where it talks about the Lord. And it said, he, the Lord, loveth righteousness and judgment, the earth is full of what? The goodness of the Lord. Now, I know that will be uh, absolutely true in the millennium. You know, we might not think it is right now, uh, but it's still, it's still a pretty, uh, the world's still a pretty nice place to live. I mean, in fact, in the United States of America, even. And it's beautiful. And I want to say something about that when we get down to verse number 12, but uh, I just want to. I, I just want to get our minds tonight on the Lord, and we get our minds on a lot of things. You know that. Did you ever think about all? all I, 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 I got on my face t- this afternoon and I was praying, and you just wouldn't believe the thoughts that go into my mind. Yeah. I mean, I'm walking around the house, and just some conversations that I've had in the last few days. They pop back into my mind, or that person, or those people, and um, and uh, and I I want my mind to be on the Lord, and uh, and not on the problem per se, uh, or problems. Uh, I want it to be on Him, and so that's what I hope that would. Uh, he's the best. I, Tim says, "Lord, you're the best." You know, Tim has a way of saying stuff, and. Uh, uh, he is the highest. He is the holiest. Uh, he's God. He's the Holy One of God. And uh, this psalm here uh, really starts out very well, and as a number of the psalms do. And uh, uh, it doesn't say who wrote the psalm. It doesn't matter. It's in the Word of God. And, uh, but he said, Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, uh, for praise is comely, uh, for the upright, praise the Lord with harp, sing unto him with the psaltery and an instrument uh, of ten strings, uh, sing unto him a new song, uh, play skillfully with a loud, with a loud noise. And so uh, I know the psalm, it starts out in verse number one, I know doctrinally uh, it's uh, the righteous, uh, is, it's referring more than likely to the Old Testament saints that are under the law. And, of course, those that are walking right. Uh, but I'll make some application for us tonight. But uh, I, I like how he says in the beginning, rejoice in the Lord, in the Lord. Uh, not in some sports event or some uh, popularity or some winning the lottery or, or uh, some uh, rock star or some entertainment or some movie or, or some uh, or, or education that you may have or or popularity, or anything, or money, uh, but rejoice in the Lord. Of course, that term's a number of times in the Scripture. And he says, rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, uh, for praise is uh, comely uh, for the upright. When he says comely, that means it's appropriate. It's fitting. And it is. It, It is only fitting that you and I that are saved by the grace of God that we should be living a life that just rejoices in the Lord. I'm saying rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say what? Rejoice. rejoice. That's what the, I said that, 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 that may be in the Old Testament, that's what the Apostle Paul says back over in, in uh, Philippians in chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Uh, we ought to be a jo- have some joy in our Christian life. Amen. Uh, and be, hey, get excited about being saved. I mean, you have been made, uh, he hath, uh, was made sin for us who knew no sin, 
that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And if any of us are walking righteously, uh, if I could say it that way, it's because of him and, and because of his Lord. Uh, him. He, notice what he says in verse number four. He said, for the Lord of the uh, word of the Lord is what? And all, and, and, and all his works are done in truth. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I believe that every Christian ought to have a little bounce in his step. Amen. Uh, you know, I mean, you want to, you know, I give out tracts. I, I hope you do. I hope you do. I hope you just get in the habit of carrying tracts with you and give them out. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you've got a little joy in you and a little bounce in your step and kind of on the lookout, I mean, I think a person would more readily take a track than if you just go there with a mundane Right? Okay, did that get across? <laughs> Good. And, uh, and so Christians ought to get a bounce in there. So we ought to rejoice in the Lord. Uh, and uh, uh, it won't be comely, our praise, if we're not right with God. Look over here to Psalm 145. He says, uh, rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely. It's fitting for the upright. When you're living right, uh, you, you'll be able to praise the Lord. Uh, I don't see guys... I don't see people that are uh, at odds with God or out of sorts praising the Lord. I see people that are right with God and walking righteously. Uh, they're the ones rejoicing and praising the Lord. I said Psalm 147, and, um, and near the end of the book there, in verse number one, he says, uh, Praise ye the Lord. Of course, the last, uh, I don't know how many Psalms uh, in, in the book of Psalms, or all start out that way, you know, it's all about praise. And uh, he said, praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant, and, it's, and, it, and, and praise is comely. It's appropriate. Proper and appropriate. It is. That way, so I listen to you sing. I, I, I listen to you sing. You did pretty good tonight, amen, for a small group, I, you know, sounded good. I was out in the mission room out there, heading to the restroom and then coming back and could hear you sing, praise the Lord, keep it up, get worse, amen. Uh, so he says, uh, praise, uh, rejoice in the Lord, verse number two. He said, rejoice, uh, uh, praise the Lord with harp. That's what, uh, you know, that, that piano is a kind of a harp. Sing unto him uh, with a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings and Sing unto him a new song. Well, well, I guess we do have a new song. That's, uh, that term, uh, new song, is in the scripture about nine times. And, uh, you know, the Lord drew me out of that pit over there in Psalm 40. You just flip over there once real quick, Psalm 40. And uh, notice in verse number one, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit. And if you didn't get brought up, you're, you're still in that pit. And he said, he brought me up also out of an horrible pit, uh, out of the miry clay. That's where I was, and set my feet upon a rock, uh, and established my goings. Oh, boy. And he hath put a what? A new song in my mouth. What was it? Even praise to our God. Uh, you know, you ought to get used to praising the Lord. Just blow somebody mind, somebody's mind. I mean, you know, you're down at the parts shop and you get something and uh, they got the part. Oh, praise the Lord. You know, they'll drop their teeth. Right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, get, get people thinking about it anyway. Amen. And, uh, and or say amen. You know, do something. Don't just stand there. Amen. And, uh, and so... Uh, he said, he hath put a new song in my uh, mouth, even praise to our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. And, uh, and you don't know, what, don't know what, what you say and how you are as a Christian will have an effect on people. It has an effect one way or the other. And you want to have a positive effect on them, of course. Now, back here to Psalm 33, he said, sing unto him with a new song, on a new song and play skillfully uh, with a loud noise. Play skillfully. I hope in our church 
and I'm, I don't mean to hammer on this, but I'm going to anyway. Uh, I hope that uh, some of you parents are, are putting your kids into piano lessons. And I hope some of you kids would at least try it. I mean, learn a musical instrument. It's something that you can always use. You're not going to be able to kick that soccer ball with the rest of your little heart. Amen. You're not. Uh, I like, I don't mind, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with playing soccer or baseball or, or whatever, but that piano over there, you can, a guitar, my sons, I would, David, Daniel took piano lessons, David didn't, and I'm, my fault. I really feel bad, because uh, Sarah did, Becca did, Rachel did, and we paid and for it, and uh, had to put out for it, but um, uh, I didn't give them to David, and I always, I, I think he's still bitter, <laughs> but you know what he did? He taught himself how to play the guitar, amen, and, he, and he's pretty good at it, so did Tim, and, and so did Tim, Tim wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it. And next time you see him, he get maybe razz He learned how to play the saxophone. Now I always thought that was just more of a girl's instrument, you know. But it isn't. I know it's a wind, and I, I know that. But um, anyway, uh, play skillfully uh, and, and keep your kids at it. By the way, I don't want to practice. Practice. Amen. Amen to you that aren't here too. I mean, teach them the, uh, a musical instrument because they'll be able to use that the rest of their life to honor the Lord and to lift him up. He said, play skillfully. Learn it good, just not just the plinking, okay? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are, did it something like that. Uh, is that how it goes? Well, okay. And so, uh, and so uh, uh, that's what you can praise the Lord. Now, notice, let's keep moving on here. And uh, because this psalm tells, uh, it's a psalm of praise. I do believe that. It's a psalm of praise. It talks about God, uh, his creation. It talks about his control over things. Uh, it talks about his compassion. It's loaded. Um, and notice what he says. For the Lord, word of the Lord is what? Uh, verse 4, excuse me. Right. I like that. Uh, look over here to Job 6. The word of the Lord is right. It's not... And, and he says, and he said, all his works are done in truth. The word of the Lord is right. The word of the Lord is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Um, uh, the word of truth, rightly dividing the word of truth. Look at Ju uh, 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 Job chapter 6 and what Job says. Uh, the word of the Lord is right, he says. Uh, uh, by the way, the word of the Lord is pure, too. You know, we talked about camp. And, uh, uh, and we think it's still in my brain. And I've been wearing that T-shirt. I've only wa I washed it once now. And it says clean on one side. In the back it says, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Right? It's a good T-shirt. Amen. And, um, uh, but uh, it's, it's pure. And that will keep you clean. Uh, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking uh, heed unto thy word thereby. Uh, it, it's, it's pure. Uh, it's, uh, it's forever. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. It's not man's word. You know, God, people say that, don't they? They say, that's just man's word. Paul said, yeah, he said, uh, we, th no, no, we thank God without ceasing because when you uh, received the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God. That's not the word of men. And it's incorruptible, and it's able to save your soul. Uh, this book, the word of the Lord is right, uh, he says. Uh, notice uh, in verse number 25 of Job 6, he said, how forcible are what? Right words. You got it right here. That's a good reason to uh, maybe memorize scripture. I mean, you don't always, you know, when you're talking to people, you might not just always have an open Bible. But you can give them scripture if you've memorized it. And how forcible. The word of God is quick and what? Powerful. How forcible. There's something about, you know it. 
about the Bible and the word of God given to people. And he said, how forcible are right words, uh, uh, Job said. Uh, listen, by knowing, we'll go back here to Psalm 32, uh, 33. He said, uh, sing unto the Lord a new song, play skillfully with a loud noise. Verse 4, for the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in true. And notice verse number 6, by the word of God, talks about it some more. Listen, the more that we know and read the word of the Lord, the more we know the God of the word. Just the way it is. I, I, I was talking to a fellow that I, and I'll, I'll, I'll give his story uh, later, not tonight, uh, a guy that I just had the honor and the blessing to lead to the, lead to the Lord, a man. And I told him, he just got, I sent him a Bible and he just got it. And uh, I just told him, I said, this is, and he's never read the Bible before. 76 years old, never has read the Bible before. Maybe, maybe uh, uh, he looked at it. I don't know. And I know the church that he's in, they never taught it to him. And uh, I told him this, uh, this morning, I told him, I said, now, this is the word of God that you hold in your hand. And that's how you communicate with him. You talk to him, and then he talks to you. Just simple things. That's how we get to know God, through the word of God. That's how you get to know one another. I talked with a lot of you people, and I get to know you. I get to know something about you. How did your work day go? Or talk about that, and, and, uh, and that's how you communicate. So we get to know him. Now, there are some in, in this particular psalm, and, and, and uh, there's really some, to me, some buzzwords about God's character and, uh, and, and things, and I'll talk to you about that in a second, but let's just move on. He said... Uh, uh, he said, he loveth righteousness, verse number five, and judgment. The earth is full of the what? Goodness of the Lord. Uh, uh, and he takes care of it. He takes care of the Lord. You know, God's been good to you. God's been good to you. He's been good to you. He's been good to you. Don't get ornery. Don't get... Amen. Don't get bent. You know, we can all get bent out of shape by this or that. But God's been really good to you. You, you, you. Children, your parents brought you to church. How many times have I said that? You ought to thank them for that. Yeah. I have my, boy, my boys and, and my kids write me notes and thank me and for my wife and our faithfulness to God. You ought to do that for your parents. And, 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 you know, the scripture says, the goodness of God leadeth thee to what? Amen. Yeah, it ought to just say, man, I'm a sorry sucker. <laughs> Amen. And, and it ought to lead you to be sorry for the way you are when you just get out of sorts and stay there. And so the goodness of the Lord, man, I... You know, I read the other day over there in Pro, uh, Job. He said, um, acquaint thyself now with God, with him. And there, oh, look at it. Look at Job 22. Come on. Job 22. Look at it. And, and look at it. It's just a great, I, I, I want to preach a message on it. But look at uh, Job chapter 22. I have already one time. Uh, but Job chapter 22. And notice verse number 20, 21. Look at it. It's a great verse. He said, acquaint now thyself with him. If you aren't acquainted with him, do it now. Now is the day of salvation. Amen. And uh, so acquaint thyself now uh, with him and be at peace. Thereby, say that next four-letter word. Good. Good shall come unto thee. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, you wouldn't think good things came to Job. Right? And you know, a lot, I, I, I've run into in my life some things that we would say were bad things. 
Right? I want to tell you something. There's been more good than there has been bad. Amen. Much, much more. I want to focus on that. I don't want to, I, I just don't want to focus on the bad stuff that you do or I do. Amen. I don't want to focus on, on uh, lousy church members. They're depressing. Amen. I want to focus on, like, like that book that Al Hughes wrote, uh, Brother John. He said, there's some people you can't help. If you don't want help, you can't get, you're not going to get it. You, I can't help you. Um, if you don't like me, I can't help you. <laughs> You know, and there's just some things in that book that just make so much sense, and you just can't help everybody. God's been good to us. He's been more good than bad. And uh, so he says, uh, the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. And he said, verse number six, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made. Hey, in the beginning, God said, let there be light. And he said, uh, uh, the heavens were made and all the hosts of them by the breath of his God. He spoke, he spoke this whole thing into existence. And by the way, look over here to 2 Peter chapter 3. And uh, I just hope some of you aren't around for this. Uh, <laughs> uh, God said, let there be light. And there was what? Yeah, he spoke this whole thing. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And uh, But notice verse number uh, back here to... 2 Peter chapter 3, he said, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall what? Pass away. With a great noise. ka ba 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 boomy, And the elements, that's what the earth is made out of. You know that from your chemistry and the chemistry chart and all that stuff. He said, And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Uh, the earth also and the works uh, that are therein shall be burned up. So God spoke the world and the heavens into existence, and he can speak them out of existence. Heaven and earth were fled away, and I saw a great white throne. And there's found no place for them to stand. So uh, back here to Psalm uh, and verse 33, and you could, you, you, you could uh, uh, read on there in, in, in 2 Peter chapter 3, uh, verses 11 and 12, but he, he says in verse number six, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the hosts of them by the breath of his ma mouth, uh, by the word of the Lord. All scriptures given by inspiration. Uh, that's the, the spirit. And, and, and the spirit's likened even to the breath uh, of his mouth. And uh, notice he says then in, in verse number seven, he gathereth of the waters of the sea together as in heat. He layeth up the depth in storehouses. And that's up there. That's, that's up there. Okay? And he said, let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the world stand in awe of him. They aren't right now, I'll tell you that. But they will one day. They'll stand in awe of him. They'll be amazed and they'll say, whoa, what's going on? Uh, you know, one of these days, you know, uh, you read over there in, uh, in Revelation chapter 14 when you got that angel and that angel is uh, preaching what's called the everlasting God. And, he, and, and the message is fear God and give, glory, uh, and give glory to him that made heaven and earth. Because right now, people don't believe that God made heaven and earth. They don't be believe that. So one of these days, they're going to stand in awe that there is a God and he's in control. Um, and again, I hope you're not here. I hope you're saved tonight, um, whatever age you are. Uh, you know, we had a, I told you maybe about this kid at camp. Uh, you guys probably knew him, and he got up Sunday morning, Sunday night and said, uh, I got saved this morning. I thought I was saved when I was four years old. They, everybody told me I was saved when I was four. Did I tell you that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, people tell me I was saved, but I always doubted it. And he got saved at 17 years old. By the way, girls and boys, uh, girls and boys, you know, at camp. Who was the camper of the week, the boy camper? Raise your hand. What was his name? Where's he from? That's that, I didn't, you know, he's sitting on the second row there when he got up there. 
and I, I, I forgot, I knew a Dawson, and that was, uh, that Dawson and Ben were the boys that left their parents' church and started coming to Daniel's church. <laughs> Did I tell you that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and his parents were there when he said that, but that's, okay, wow, that's his first year, he's never been to camp before. Wow, he got, he got in. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, there's a good guy. I mean, praise the Lord. You know what I'm talking about? Amen. Good guy. All right. Amen. Camp's good place. Pretty cute chicks over there. Pretty, pretty nice guys over there. Amen. And uh, anyway, back to, the, back to the rain, whatever, back to the story here. Uh, verse number nine, for he spake, and uh, it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. That's the power of God's word. The Lord bringeth, I like this here. Uh, the Lord bringeth the, uh, watch this. He said, the Lord, he's in control, folks. He knows what's going on. He said, the Lord bringeth, I like this. He said, the Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to what? No. Not. He maketh the devices uh, of the people of what? None effect. Notice, the counsel of the Lord standeth, say it. The device, uh, excuse me, the thoughts of his heart uh, to all uh, generations. And so you got what you got here and you got it going on. You got the counsel of the Lord and, uh, and, uh, uh, against the counsel of the heathen. And the Lord says right here, he said, uh, that in verse number 10, he's going to bring their counsel to nothing. Uh, and, and you see that in the scripture. Go over here to Daniel chapter 2, if you don't mind. And Daniel chapter 2. Uh, the Lord can turn the counsel of the heathen into nothingness. To naught, to nothing. Zip, zilch, big old goose egg. Uh, in Daniel chapter 2, um, uh, uh, and Nebuchadnezzar has a dream, and he didn't know what it was. And he uh, says in verse number three, uh, the king said unto them, he, well, what he did is he commanded in verse number two to, to bring, call the magicians, the astrologers, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans. These were his counselors. These were the guys with uh, had so many degrees, they were burning up. Amen. Uh, these were the PhDs. And he said, to, for to show the king his dreams, so they came and stood before the king. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream. My spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spake the uh, Chaldeans to uh, the king in Syriac, O king, live forever, and tell thy servants a dream. And we will show the interpreter. Anybody can do that. You tell me your dream, I can tell the interpreter. I got it. Amen? Yeah. Everybody has a word. Everybody has an uh, interpretation. <laughs> Amen. We could, uh, anybody could do that. But the king said, wait a second, boys. He said in verse 5 uh, to the Chaldeans, a thing is gone from me. If you will not, and I like this, if you will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, you shall be cut in pieces and your houses shall be made a dunghill. And you know what? They couldn't do it. But there was a man in his kingdom that could do it. He brought their counsel to naught. Amen. And the counsel of the Lord, which from which uh, uh, Daniel got the interpretation, he went, he got his buddies. You know the rest of the story. He got his buddy together. They had a prayer meeting. They called upon God, and God showed him uh, what, that, uh, what that dream, that, uh, uh, he, he showed him what the dream was, and then he interpreted it uh, for Nebuchadnezzar. And by the way, when it was all done, Nebuchadnezzar praised the Lord. Yeah. Amen. So... Uh, I like this. I mean, there's no, they're not a battle. There's not a, there, it's not, no contest between the counsel of the heathen and the counsel of the Lord. Look over here to Isaiah chapter 8. Uh, you can really, uh, uh, yeah, I, if you want, I mean, if you study your Bible a little bit or uh, just go look up that word counsel and, uh, and, and, and run it through the scripture. And, uh, and, and you'll see, there's, a, there's been a battle between man's counsel and man's words and God's counsel, which is the word of God, the counsel of the Lord, standeth forever. I wanted you to go to Isaiah chapter 8 and uh, pick it up in verse number 9. Watch this. Watch this now. 
uh, what you got here, and we're, 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 we're moving in, listen folks, we're moving into the, the days of the coming of the Lord. Okay? And so much of Daniel, uh, of course, Daniel and, and, and the prophets, the major prophets, Isaiah and Jeremiah, have a lot to say about that. And so, of course, do the Psalms. But notice, uh, here is a warning, and I, you just gotta, you're going to have to uh, take my word for what I, when I say this. Here's a warning to the United Nations. The United Nations is against Israel. Most of their, um, oh, I don't know what you call them, decree, pol policies. policies or decrees, um, what they have made, 50% of them have been, been, been against this, that little country. Did you ever look on a map at Israel and see how small it is? <laughs> and, um, but, uh, and it's getting more anti-Semitic. You know that. I don't care what Biden said about Somebody writing a swastika sign on the, on the elevator room or something in the State Department said we won't tolerate that. He speaks out of both sides of his mouth. Okay, many most of your leaders do. Okay, the State Department, the State Department has against been against Israel ever since they tried to become a nation back in 1947. They were mad at, at Harry Truman because he voted that they could become a nation. The State Department, I, I can't remember the guy's name, I don't know if it was Atchison, Dean Atchison or not, you can look it up, but they were upset with Truman. He was a Democrat, by the way. And, uh, but anyway, notice it says in verse number nine, notice the very first word, associate, get together. Yourselves, O ye people, and ye shall be broken in pieces, and give all uh, ear, all ye far countries, gird yourselves and ye shall be broken in pieces. They're getting ready, they're, they're getting ready. You know, you saw this thing with Rue the other night, and they got 25, was it 2,500 or 25,000 troops at the border right there. Everything's kind of conglomerating there in the middle, in that area of our world, with Eastern Europe and, and coming down, and then from the Chinese, they're moving east, or excuse me, moving west, and they're the buildup of their army, of course. He said, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Now watch verse 10. Take counsel, say it. That's why you call it the United Nations. They're all together. This is Psalm 2 also. He said, take counsel together, and it shall come to what? Yeah. Nothing. Speak the word. And it shall not stand. Uh, but the counsel of the Lord standeth forever. For God is with us. Israel speaking there. Notice in chapter 19. Chapter 19. God's right and you're wrong. Amen. You can always bet on the word of God. You can always do that. Verse number three, and the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof, and they shall seek to the idols and the charmers and to them that have a familiar spirits and to the woods. I'll destroy the counsel thereof. And so the counsel of the Lord versus the counsel of the he heathen. Go back here uh, to uh, Psalm 33. Wow. Well, we got a little time left. And uh, only nine more minutes. But uh, notice what he says. In a great verse. I love this verse. And uh, I, w I, wish, I wish America was in there. He said, blessed is the nation. It was in there. Uh, blessed is the nation whose God is who? The Lord. Not Buddha. Not Muhammad. Not, not a, not, not, not a, you know, there is really an anti-God movement in this world and in this country. You ever see those, and I don't go for it, uh, and if you have this on the back of your car, I'm not being critical, but uh, you see these little fishes, yeah. and that's supposed to be a Christian symbol. Well, it, I, I don't see where that's in the scripture. Mm -hmm. hey, anybody with me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know what they're doing with that? But I, I don't mind. If somebody has it, at least people think it is. 
and that's okay with me, just like uh, Christmas. You know, that's okay with me if they think that that's when Jesus was born. At least Jesus is getting some publicity. I don't care. Same with Easter. I don't care. And But now you know what they're doing? I saw they're putting in there, and they put little legs on that little fish, and they put Darwin in there, mocking it. I saw a new one the other day. I was down at Schwab and got some tires. And I saw that, oh, I saw, and I looked a little closer. <laughs> oh, they're smarties. Oh, they're, they really are. They re I wish they'd use their brains for God. I really do. And they're innovative things that they come up with. Boy, could they get saved and use that mind for God. But that, you know what he had in there? Anybody see it? He had that fish, and he had in there were fishing. Fish and, like fish and chips. Son, I'll tell you what, this world's against any semblance of God at all. And that's in the U.S. of A. That pilgrims came over with a Bible. Amen. And, and evangelized uh, the Indians that were here. Amen. So he said, blessed is the nation uh, that whose God is the Lord. And of course, he's referring to Israel, but it's any nation. because And the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. And that would be, a, that would be Israel. Uh, but that'll do with any nation. And, uh, you know, uh, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. You know, God can bless and God can curse. He can take his blessings off. He, uh, he did to Israel. Did you ever read Gen uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28? Go read it. Uh, 14 times he talks about blessing. And 54 times he talks about if they, if they follow him, if the Lord is their God, if God is their Lord, a blessing to the nation whose God is the Lord, if it's the Lord Jehovah of the Bible, and, and he told how, how God would bless them if they followed him. And then 54 times he said, cursed be you if you don't do this and you don't do this. And so God can take that away. Uh, Israel was a great nation, even under Saul, David and Solomon. But, oh, you know, uh, as it just went down, just, hey, it's devolution, folks. It's not evolution, it's devolution. And they went down, and you read over in 2 Kings uh, 15 and, and 24, you, were, you read where they, uh, they failed, and they went against the Lord and did some just abominable things. And God took his hand, a blessing off of them, and brought them into uh, northern tribes into uh, Assyria. And the, and, the, and, and the southern tribes later on, they followed their sister, and, uh, and they went into captivity of Babylon. So God can take his hand of blessing off. Blessed is, blessed is the nation. And you see, <sighs> what you said here tonight, that was good. I, I, that little thing you said, I'm glad about things like that. Uh, what, uh, the governor just signed a little thing that says, in your state here, no employer can require you to be vaccinated. That's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, and I'm glad. Praise the Lord. Some people prayed. Uh, you know, we, we, we're supposed to pray for our leaders. Yeah. That we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. But that's not revival. You know what I mean? I'm not... It's a good thing. I'm glad because now I, that's at least one battle I don't have to fight in this state. And we're going to have them. We're going to have them. And, uh, and so uh, uh, blessed is the nation uh, whose God is the Lord. I want to just say this, that the seeds, I've got to say this, the seeds for the destruction of our country because we did Honor God. You know the devil doesn't like that. Come on. You know that. But the seeds weren't sown in the Democratic Party. They were sown years, 100, 100 plus years ago in churches that got away from that book. 
and misinterpreted that book. And what you got that came across in the beginning of the 20th century, that would be 1900, one or so. You had the National Council of Christian Churches come into play and the Christian Council of Christian, uh, Christian just get the name Christian off it. Don't do that, but they did it. And they sowed, and they infiltrated the, with communists, they infiltrated the seminaries, and those seeds were sown. It just didn't come about. Listen, it just didn't come about. It popped up where we're at. It took a while coming. They're slow. Uh, they're patient with their program. And, uh, and where we are today uh, is, is, is what was planted many years ago for the destruction of this country. And whatever goes on, Someone told me the other day, and I'm going to quit here. Someone told me the other day, I don't know who it was, that some guy that's a real uh, anti-Semitic billionaire, he, he bought out a conservative news station. Who told me that? Somebody told me. I don't want to mention names tonight. And... Uh, and he's worse than the guy that owned it. And the guy that owned it was a, a belonged, belonged to the Roman church and blah, blah, blah. And this guy is just big time. He's probably ahead of the guy that started these, uh, funded these uh, riots. Now you got a name. And he bought over now a conservative television program, and you know what I'm talking about. I said, boy, that's me. What's going to happen now? It changes nothing for me. Whatever's going on in our country changes nothing for what my Bible, the word of the Lord, which is right, and, and, and what it has instructed me to do, and that is preach the gospel. And by the way, that's your job too. How are we doing tonight? Yeah. It's our job. Nothing changes. The outward circumstances, Paul's in prison. Didn't stop him. Didn't moan and groan. Can I say this? I got to say it. You ought to be happy wherever you are. Rejoice in the Lord. Whatever's going on, <laughs> don't fret. That's not going to do any good. Rejoice in the Lord. You think about this missionary we had the other day. He's happy in the Lord, and he's living in a country that none of us would like. I don't want to live over there. Huh? Wars right across is next door to him. He was, I mean, the, the troops are there. Ukraine is a country that is coveted by Putin. You know that. And he's a, he's a, well, he's, he's a dictator. He wants to expand that big old bear. And, uh, and that's where he lives, serving the Lord, and he's happy in the Lord. You got Christians today, we live in America, we still got freedoms. They may be, they may be eroding. That's just face it. It's happening. And we should have the joy of the Lord in spite of that. Are you here? Amen. Well, look, look with me and I'll finish. Look at verse number 13. The Lord looketh from heaven. He beholdeth all the sons of men. Verse 14 from the I want you to just notice this phrase, and we'll finish. Uh, from the place of his habitation, verse 14, he looketh upon all of the inhabitants of the earth. Look at verse number um, 18. Uh, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them in fear. You know, God's up there, and he's looking at everything. He's looking at it all. He's observed. There's nothing that escapes his gaze. Nothing. He's, all, he's omnipresent, and he's looking down. 
And because God, our God, is, is such a compassionate God and a loving God, he came down. He looked down if there was anybody uh, that wanted him. And uh, over there in, in Psalm 14, and anybody that did good, but then he came down. He says, uh, you know, no man hath ascended up into heaven, but the Son of Man which came down from heaven, came from heaven. He came down. And he died on that cross. He looked. He saw the deplorable condition of man lost. And he came down and sacrificed himself, the Lord Jesus Christ, for our sins, that we might be redeemed, that we might be forgiven, that we might have the joy of the Lord. And one day, thank you, sister, he's coming again. He's coming down again. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. If we're not so, I'd have told you so. I go to prepare a place for you. And uh, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. What a great God. What a great God. He's full of mercy. He's got the right counsel. He cares. He looks down. He cares uh, for his creation. He came down because he cares for his creation. And he's coming again because he cares for his own. Oh, love the Lord. Amen. Let's bow for prayer. Lord, thank you tonight for the word of God. I thank you for its everlasting, eternal truths. Thank you that your counsel stands forever. And I thank you we can count on it. And uh, uh, we, uh, we can depend upon it fully, wholly. Uh, there, there's, uh, thank you for its purity and, uh, and its rightness. I uh, thank you for that. And uh, Lord, help us in these days. Problems all around us. Help us not to fret ourselves because of evil men. And please, neither be thou envious. Our oh Lord, their time is coming. And our time is coming. Oh, even so, we pray tonight that you'd send your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to receive us uh, up to, uh, unto yourself. Help us, I pray tonight, to make you the supreme love of our life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, we'll sing 42. I mean, 442. 4442. Praise Him. Thank you. Yeah. You may stand. 442, a little faster on that one. A little faster. Okay. 442. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I, I spoke to her and interrupted her. It's my fault. I was just saying a little faster. That's what I was saying. Amen. Okay. Uh, number 442, praise him. Praise him.
Amen. Go out there and praise him and tell somebody about him. God bless you. See you later on this week. We want to meet back by my door if you want to go to Missoula. Thank you.